what is this software planner this requires program size or number of software developer on team in case of this what is the required data test is considered and the report is going to be generated for the patient that is considered in the data output what is the program weakness in the second module what is the program weakness in the third module we have one more formula here that is the span size of a program hello all it is once again dr ravi kumar yb you are going to learn about the data structure metric in today's session in this metric that is the data structure metric you are going to learn about the need of software development and other activities are to process data that is the essential data item that is given as input to the system that is the output that is processing takes place within a system and how the processing is going to be computed and the output data is generated so if that is the case this is the program that is the payroll program for this we have the data input the names of social security number and pay rate and number of hours worked all these are the inputs given by the user to the system then internal data what is that internal processing takes place withholding rates overtime factors insurance premium rates all these are implicit data which needs to be considered for this project payroll management what is the data produced by the processing after processing this this plus this this plus this this let me call this as column 1 column 2 both are added to produce column 3 so we have gross pay withholding net pay ledgers or these are the outputs produced so similarly we have the spreadsheet for the spreadsheet we have the data input that is item names item amounts that is the relationship among items all these are some of the inputs which we consider here so what is the value which is considered internally or implicitly cell computations subtotal or some of the internal data which is considered here what is the output produced spreadsheet of items and totals these are the values going to be generated for the spreadsheet then we have a software planner what is this software planner this requires program size or number of software developer on team then what is the implicit data considered for this model parameter constant efficient constant coefficients all these are some of the implicit data considered here finally we have estimated project effort and estimated project duration all these are considered as in data input data output if that is the case let me take up one more example that is if i want to develop a software for any of the diagnostics in case of this what is the required data that is diagnostics is another important uh, uh, medical diagnostics is another important application wherein you are going to enter the user input that is the name of the patient then what is the name of the patient which are the tests recommended by the pathologist which tests are recommended by pathologist are considered in the column 1 and in the column 2 what is the price of per test that is in the column 2 we have price of per test and after all these processing column 1 plus column 2 we are going to produce the output that is the report is going to be generated how the report is going to be generated total price of that total price or cost of this diagnostics information all those things are going to be calculated in column number 3 that is the output that is the receipt or the total cost of that test is considered and the report is going to be generated for the patient that is considered in the data output so if that is the case an important set of metrics which capture in the amount of data input processed in an output form software account of this data structure is called as data structured matrix 
which is the input given to the system, what is the output produced by the system by utilizing the implicit details is going to be considered as data structured matrix. The concentration is on variables and given constant within each module and ignores the input output dependencies. Let me tell you what is the meaning of this. The concentration is on variable. The variable may be the type of test which is going to be carried out for a patient and what is the price of per test and all those things are considered here. Similarly, we have some of the data structure metrics here. The first one is the amount of data. What is the amount of data going to be given to the system? And what is the usage of data within a module? That is the implicit details. Then program weakness. What is the amount of data which is not utilized with the total number of information, implicit information available within a system is going to be considered as weakness. Then we have sharing of data among modules. If there is a flow of data from one module to another module, we say that the patient module information is going to be shared with the pathologist information. Suppose if the pathologist suggests a few more any tests to the patient, then it has to be, it has to come back to the different module. So sharing of data between modules is also possible. Then we have the amount of data. To measure the amount of data, there are further many different metrics are used. The first one is number of variables, also called as VARS. This, please note that carefully, VARS, that is the number of variables considered here, then constants and labels are added up to get the value criteria N2. What is the meaning of N2? The total amount of data which is considered here. That is, we have N2 which is considered here as in this metric, total number of occurrence of the variables are computed. That is going to be considered here. That is, the number of operands we have, that is N2. This N2 defines that the number of operands used in the program is going to be considered there. The number of occurrences, that is, as I have already discussed with you in the previous sessions, that is, N is equal to N1 plus N2. Where? What is the meaning of N1? The total number of unique operators used. What is N2? The total number of unique operands used. You please recollect the information conveyed in the previous session. So this N1 plus N2 defines the unique operators and unique operands. This N1 defines the total number of occurrences of this operators. Occurrences of of operators, total occurrences of operators. What is this N2 corresponds to? N2 corresponds to total occurrence of so of operands. Even though it is repeated, it is not a matter here. So this is going to be considered here. This was the formula we considered in the previous session. The same thing, N2 is going to be computed here as variables constants plus labels used in the program is considered here. So the total number of occurrences of the variables N2 is going to be defined. Then usage of data within a module that is implicit data which is used within the program that is considered here. The measure to measure this metric the average number of live variables are computed. A variable is a live from its first to its last references within the procedure. The live references are considered here. That means the data while entering the information, the Aadhaar card of one person may be different. May it is not may, it is always unique and one and it is different from the other person. So we are going to enter that. What is the date of birth of a person? The date of birth of a person may also vary. So we are going to consider all those as a live variables. What is the meaning of live variable? Date of birth is one of the fields in an application form which receives input from the user and which is computed and calculated based upon that information. We are going to consider which is a primary key or a foreign key in any of the database, in any of the tables in a database. 
So this software development process takes place, considers all this live information. For example, if we want to characterize the average number of live variables for a program having modules, we can use the equation. That is the live variables, that is this. Sum of count of live variables divided by sum of count of executable statements, which is commonly written for the execution of a program is considered here to calculate the average number of live variables. So similarly, we have, for example, live variable program formula is calculated by summation of i is equal to 1 to m live variable of i, where live variable 1 plus live variable 2 plus live variable 3, so on up to live variable n is going to be considered, which is divided by total number of live variables considered here. There were 1 to n. So in this case, it is n. In this case, it is 1 to m. So it is divided by m. The live variable program is going to be calculated with this, which is same as the average of that. The, uh, yes, the live variable is the average live variable metric computed from the ith module. That is the module in which the total number of live variables used. The equation could compute the average span size for the program of n spans. We have one more formula here, that is the span size of a program. The span size of a program is determined with this formula. Again, it is an average or mean of that. If you look at it, it is span size of 1 plus sam span size of 2 plus sam span size 3 plus so on up to span size n divided by n, which gives me the mean or average of that. That is the span size of a program, which is the third criteria I'm going to consider here program weakness. Let me tell you that with in terms of formula. Average lines of variables that is gamma is equal to sum of the count of live variables divided by sum of the count of executable statements. You may think that which is same as the earlier one that is this one. That is the sum of count of live variables divided by sum of count of executable statements which is a statement not a variable. I am using here which is a statement, it is a variable. Now we have the average live of variables is defined, that is live variable star gamma that gives me the module weakness. That is if there are four modules in a project, what is the program weakness? That is program weakness in the first module. What is the program weakness in the second module? What is the program weakness in the third module? What is the program weakness in the fourth module is going to be calculated with the help of live variable and to this weakness, program weakness. That is gamma, which is characterized by this point of information. That is this gamma, average live of variables. The program is normally a combination of various modules and the program weakness can be useful, it can be a useful measure which is defined as program weakness WP is equal to summation I is equal to 1 to N WM I divided by M, which is again an average of this, average of this information. The last one, which is WMI, weakness of the ith module, weakness of the program, entire program, M indicates the number of modules in the program. So these are certain kinds of parameters and criteria we are considering under the program weakness. One more thing I want to include here, that is the program weakness depends on the module's weakness. If the modules are weak, that is cohesive, less cohesive, then it increases the effort of effort and time metrics required to complete the project. Let me clarify you the program weakness even in more detail. That is, if there is an interdependency from one module to another module, suppose there are four modules in a project, I want to convey the information from one module to another module. And if there is no interdependency, that means there is no flow of data from one module to another module, then again it is a problem for the developers so that they have to think in such a manner that it has to be executed according to the flow of data from one module to another module. So it is the responsibility of the developer who can develop the program weakness in terms of less cohesive. That means modules are weak. When we consider that the modules are weak, when it is less cohesive. When it is more coupling, 
that means there is a dependency there is a easy flow of data from one module to another module then we say that it is strong the modules are strong the program it is not a weakness of a program then it is strong so we are going to calculate that which is the fourth criteria sharing of data modules data among modules that is the same thing if there is any data uh, is shared from one module to another module then we say that it is the sharing of data among module you can see that ir coupling 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 means interdependency sharing of data from one module to another module that is called as coupling there is a concatenation there is a joining from one module to another module that is how we are going to consider modules also increased which is that parameter passing between modules are also increased as a result no more effort and time are required to complete the project which is very easy to do that so sharing data among modules is an important matrix to calculate the effort and time now if we consider that there are three modules this is module 1 module 2 module 3 then we have three modules of an imaginary from an imaginary program the pipes this is concatenating that is the data from one module to another module which is the data generated by this that is a b j we have the pipes the data shared in program bubble that is we are going to share the data from module a to module b module b to module c then we have the joining of these things there is a flow of data from one module to another module so we have the main program and the main program is invoking the swap function and the swap function is again returning the data to the main function so there is a share of data from main function to the swap function and the swap function is returning the value to the main function this is how the data is going to be shared among different modules within a program or within a project so with this i am going to conclude this session that how the data structure metrics are going to be calculated which was explained in today's session dear students kindly come back to me if you have any questions with respect to the topics i discussed in today's session so that i can give you the solutions to all of your questions in the live classes thank you very much thank you one and all